Hey guys, what's up? This is Theo here, and in this video, we're going to go through FreeCodeCamp's object-oriented and functional programming. Let's go to this one first, and I'm just going to do what they ask of us. Uh, so let me reset all of these. Cool. So um, let's give our motorbike object wheels, engines, and seat attributes. So here you can sort of see we have the construct for a car. Now we're just going to do the same thing. So they did this as a string, the properties. Um, you can also just do it as a literal in terms of a property. So uh, without the um, parentheses for a or for or quotation marks for a string. So um, what we want is we want wheels for a motorbike. That's going to be two. And let me go ahead and add this below the line. Sorry. Okay. So we have wheels two. Um, what else do we need? We need engines. That'll be one. And seats. That will be one. Let's go ahead and run. And that works. Cool. Let's go to the next challenge. So the next one we're going to do is looking at using a constructor. And let me reset this again. So a constructor, because JavaScript is a prototype based language, which means that everything is an object and will truly inherit from um, the base, sort of a base object, if you will. Um, this is how we sort of simulate e prior to ES6 a uh, class based uh, instantiation. So constructors are generally capitalized. They start with a capital letter. And so this keyword right here, right, if we do not invoke it with the new keyword, uh, if you understand the quirks of JavaScript, then the, this will actually belong to the window. And if we are in strict mode, um, it does not allow it to be scoped at the window. We will actually get undefined. So um, Let's go ahead and do this. Let's add the properties we want. So we need the wheel, wheels, engines, and seats. So we'll say this dot wheels for a motorbike is two. And when we create an instance again, the this is going to refer to this object because that's what the new keyword will bind it to. So uh, let's go ahead and add um, engines to be one. And finally, this dot seats to be one. Cool. Let's go ahead and run it. Awesome. Okay. Next up. Let's go ahead and make instance of our instances of our objects. Let me reset this. So now to create a new car, we're going to say new car. And this will give us a new instance of this, right, with these properties. Um, and now we can tack on more properties. So it wants us to add a nickname. So I can say my car, either using bracket notation or dot notation, nickname. I'll say cool car. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. Nice. So the next one is let's create a object though with some parameters, right? So you can sort of see um, there's the parameters, but let's go ahead and allow the user to designate these parameters. So we'll say wheels, seats, and engines, right? And now we'll just swap these out. We're not doing any validation, we're just completing this assignment. Now, when we create a new car, we are just going to pass this in. So this is now more dry. Don't repeat yourself. And it's more encapsulating in terms of what the function does. So um, with that said, we can add on the wheels to seats one and engines one. Or sorry, we have a car. So wheels will be uh, four, say four seats, and one engine. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and run that. Nice. So next up is we've looked at what we can expose property wise. And now let's also look at um, how we can create private variables. So say we, you know, we, we want to create this get gear function and set gear function, but do we really need to allow them to um, update it directly? No, we probably want to hide it behind a function because this goes into, uh, again, encapsulation, which is a principle of object oriented programming, which basically says that we should just expose basically the API, the what, but not the internals. So let's go ahead and create this. So we have a method called get gear, and this will be exposed through this keyword. And this is a function taking a value. And what I can do here is I'm going to create a variable actually it's called gear. And um, what I'll do is I will just say gear is equal to val, and we want to return gear. So never do they have direct access to gear. But through these methods, we can get access to it. But we can't update it. It's only read only. All right. So the next method we want to have 
I'm sorry, that should be set. And now let's do get. So we'll say get gear. That's the function. And what we can do in get gear, just return gear. Let's go ahead and run that. Nice. All right, so let's use the map keyword now. Uh, so basically what map does, map is sort of the beginnings of functional programming in that a lot of times when you're learning to code, you're very used to uh, for loops, which is fine, um, but it's not declarative. You know, we're, we're saying the iteration count, when to start it, when to end, the step count. Um, but a map says, okay, you hand me a list because it's on the array uh, prototype, the native code, and you hand me a function and I will map, I will loop over this array internally and I will apply that function to each element, right? Um, so let's go ahead and try this. So use the map function to add three to every value in uh, the old array. So we can say old array dot map because it's a method. And what we do, we pass this a function, okay? So I'm just gonna create a function here. Function add three, right? And um, we're just gonna return, it's gonna take in a value, return value equals three. Okay, so um, I, can, I can give it my add three function. And now, Go ahead and run this. Awesome. So what this did, right? This will this map. This is going to pass to this function that current um, value in the array, so one. And now from here we can we can manipulate it, do whatever we want, and then it'll keep going. So cool. Next one. Let's look at reduce. So reduce is good for. Um, the best thing that comes to mind is is creating a sum. Again, this is a for loop, but with functional programming, we're going more for a declarative approach, right? We don't want to know the internals. We just want to tell, um, you know, the language or sort of tell the program what to do. So use the reduce, mo reduce method to sum all the values in the array and assign it to single value. Okay, so let's do this. So we'll just say array.reduce, okay, and what this does is takes a function which has an accumulator and a value. So the accumulator is um, basically the initial, the initial uh, state we want to start from. In this case, we want to start with zero, right? And that's why I'm passing it there as this um, argument after the um, after the braces. And now I can just do return accumulator plus value okay so let me run this and what this will do right the first time through we get zero plus four and now the new accumulator is four and we'll just keep going through cool so um, next one is filter and filter as you might imagine will given the predicate return elements that meet our condition okay so use filter to create a new array with all the values in old array, which are less than six. So we can say filter. And again, I'm just gonna take my function out. I'm gonna say less than six, and I'm gonna build it right here. I'm gonna say function less than six. And the first argument here is the value, and then we get the index, and then we get the array. But we only want the value here. and all we need to return is a boolean in this case, true or false. So we'll return value less than six. All right, let's go ahead and run that code. Awesome. So let me look how many more we have. All right, cool, we got some more. Um, so sort, right, sort actually takes a comparator function, which just means how you want to sort the elements. So obviously it's using an internal sort you can pass it a compare function to look at. So you sort to sort the array from largest to smallest. So we'll say function, and this will take the current element and basically the element ahead of it. And then what we can do is, I think, turn a minus b, which is basically saying if a is less than b. Did I do it wrong? a minus b. Do, 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 do elements from smallest to largest. Oh, sorry. Return A, B minus A, B minus A, which 
So it literally either returns zero, negative one, or one. And based on those, it'll swap, stay the same, or swap the other way. Let's go ahead and run that, cool. All right, reverse arrays with reverse. This is very simple. Uh, we just call it our verse. Again, it's on the prototype. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so now let's use concat. So concat's great because concat doesn't actually uh, mutate the array, um, whereas push will. So let's go ahead and look at this. We can say, so basically, if we don't assign this here, we would just do old array dot concat um, three, right? We log out old array. It's not gonna have changed. But if we store this old array dot concat, and what do we want to cat? Concat. We want to concat concat me, right? So now what we should get is we should get one, two, three, four, five, six, because it's concatenated the old array with this new array. So let's go ahead and run that. Awesome. So now we are on to the split. Split does is it will take an array and basically break it into um, elements or indexes, indices, strings uh, based on your delimiter. So here we can call string.split. And what do we want to split on? Um, we can just, let's see, I think that should be enough. Let's see. Split, split on the string, we'll just split on the space right there. Awesome. And that will, as you can sort of see right here, split me into an array. Awesome. So it's split it on each space and we have an index representing each word. All right, so our last one in this challenge is join strings with join. So now what we can do is we can take join me dot join and what do we want to join on this time? We want to join on the comma. So let's go ahead and join this. Let's look at what we get. Split me into, we should use a join method on the array. Didn't I just use join? Oh, sorry. Join me. Run that. All right, cool. So I needed to join actually, basically taking them all on the space, um, not on the comma. So sorry about that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know and I'll keep going doing some of these series. I've actually been wanting to complete free code camp just for fun. Um, a lot of stuff like join, I can't say I use every day. But some of the stuff is good. Um, I use a lot of functional programming. So, um, yeah, guys, hopefully we'll get into some more of the stuff. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day and take care.